They search every nook and corner for nukes. Did they find it? They might have or they may not have. One thing is sure, if you search for love, real love, you'll find it and you'll be happy. Everyone will be happy. Search for love, find love, live in love. Nukes or no nukes, we're not bothered. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Syria blocks Red Cross aid to rebel enclave in harms. Obama says Iran strike is an option but warns Israel. At least 20 dead as tornadoes sweep across US states. Deal reached over BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Pakistan poll President Zardari party makes gains. Hackers had a full functional control over NASA computers. And now the news in detail. Syria blocks Red Cross aid to rebel enclave in Homs. The Syrian authorities on Friday blocked without explanation an officially sanctioned Red Cross convoy laden with food and medical supplies from entering a devastated neighborhood in the central city of Homs one day after the army overwhelmed the main re rebel stronghold there after a brutal attack. There was unconfirmed reports that Syrian security forces were conducting house-to-house -house searches as summary executions in neighborhood Baba Amir and while the convoy of seven Red Cross trucks was parked at the edge of the neighborhood where military sentries refused to grant entry despite official approval of 24 hours after. It was unclear why the Syrian military had blocked the convoy. But the convoy organizers said officials had told them that the Baba Amir neighborhood was still not safe. There was possibly a legitimate concern about the mines and other body traps, organizers said, but they were not given a precise reason. The Red Cross angrily rebuked the Syrian government in a statement that reflected the growing international frustration with delays in funneling help to civilians whose lives have been upended by the uprising in Syria, which is now nearly a year old. It's unacceptable that the people who have been in need of emergency assistance for weeks have been still not receiving it or any help. Jacob Kallenberger, the president of the International Committee of Red Cross, said in a statement from its headquarters in Geneva. He said the Red Cross and the Syrian Arab Red Crescent Society, which is together, has sent the convoy to Homs in the morning, waited all day to enter Baba Amir. We are staying in Homs tonight in hope of entering Baba Amir in the very near future, Mr. Kallenberger said. In an addition, many families have fled Baba Amir and we will help them as soon as we possibly can. He said the humanitarian situation was very serious then and it's worse now. The convoy's arrival in Homs came as at least 12 people, including children, were killed in an apparent rocket or mortar attack by Syrian army on anti-government protesters in Rastan, another central Syrian city roiled by a pricing. Graphic video posted online showed hundreds of people protesting then, fleeing in panic at the rocket explosion which sent body parts flying. If it succeeds in entering Bamba Amir, the relief convoy will give international officials an opportunity to make a detailed assessment of the fighting there, since dissident forces withdrew on Thursday. The retreat set the stage for elite government soldiers to turn their attention and superior firepower to other insurgent redoubts further north of despite the increasing international pressure for ceasefire. Obama says Iran's strike is an option but warns Israel. 
President Barack Obama speaking days before a crucial meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel stiffened his pledge to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons, even as he warned Israel of negative consequences of a preemptive military strike on Iran's nuclear facilities. Seeking to reassure a close American ally that contends it has reached a moment of reckoning with Iran, Mr. Obama rejected suggestions that the United States was willing to try to contain a nuclear-armed Iran. He declared explicitly that his administration will use force, a military component, as he put it, only as a last resort to prevent Tehran from acquiring a bomb. The president also said he would try to convince Mr. Netanyahu, who is in a meeting here on Monday at a time of heightened fears of conflict, that a premature military strike could help Iran by allowing it to portray itself as a victim of aggression. And he said such military action would only delay, not prevent, Iran's acquisition of nuclear weapons. Mr. Obama's remarks in a 45-minute interview with the Atlantic magazine this week were intended to reinforce a sense of solidarity between the United States and Israel without ceding ground on differences between their two governments over the timetable or triggers for potential military action. I think that the Israeli government recognizes that the President of the United States I don't bluff, Mr. Obama said in the interview with Jeffrey Goldberg, a national correspondent with the Atlantic. If also don't, as a matter of sound policy, go around advertising exactly what our intentions are. But I think both the Iranian and the Israeli governments recognize that when the United States says it's unacceptable for Iran to have nuclear weapon, we mean what we say, the president said. With nearly 14,000 people massing in Washington this weekend for a meeting of the pro-Israel lobbying group APAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, Mr. Obama was also trying to shape the narrative and dissipating days of speeches urging him to harden his policy. Mr. Obama is to speak to the group on Sunday on a critical timing issue whether any attack against Iran should come at the point it acquired the capability to develop nuclear weapon rather than later if it manufactured one, Mr. Obama was conspicuously silent. The Israeli government argues that Iran cannot be allowed to achieve nuclear capability, saying there would not be enough time to prevent it from producing a bomb once its leaders decided to do so. The White House rejects that the view, although on Wednesday, Secretary of State Hillary Rotem Clinton slightly muddied the waters by testifying in the House that the goal of the United States was to prevent Iran from having nuclear weapons capability. Administration officials said she misspoke. The laundering regime and the weakness in its implementation and continuing an unacceptable risk posed to the international financial system by Iran's activities. The prohibitions of the order do not apply to property and interest in property of the government of Iran that were blocked pursuant to Executive Order 12170 of November 14, 1979, and thereafter made subject to the transfer of directness set forth in Executive Order 12281 of January 19, 1981 and implementing regulations thereunder. In addition, nothing in the order prohib prohibits transactions for the conduct of the official business of the federal government by employees. Grant At least 20 dead in tornadoes sweep across U.S. states. A series of powerful storms and tornadoes have killed at least 20 people in the U.S. states of Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio, officials say. Local police confirm that 13 people died as tornadoes swept across three countries in Indiana. Five others died in Kentucky with two fatalities in Ohio. Earlier tornadoes hit Alabama causing widespread damage. We are no match for Mother Nature at her worst, said Indiana Governor Mish Daniels. 
She is due to visit affected areas on Saturday. The storm stretches across the vast part of the U.S. Midwest came days after another system killed 13 people. The first deaths on Friday were reported in Indiana, where the small town of Henryville was badly damaged. Reports of extreme damage included a roof torn off a high school. An official from Clark County Sheriff's Department described the nearby town of Mercyville in Indiana, located close to Hersiville, as completely gone. Yen Helvering, 24, told reporters she saw a storm cell across the highway as she drove towards Henryville. She then came across wreckage, including an overturned tractor trailer alongside the road near the town. Ms. Helvering, who posted a series of images online, said she saw what she seemed to be a funnel when driving between two storm cells. The weather was terrible. I suddenly saw a tornado coming towards me. I could see it swelling. Then I saw one behind me. I was stuck in between two tornadoes. My dad directed me while I was driving between the two tornadoes. It was truly terrifying. In Salem, Indiana, a toddler was found injured in a field after a tornado's passed through, reports said before being taken to a children's hospital, where she was later identified. A family of four were found dead in Washington County, Indiana, Sheriff Claude Combs told Louisville Courier Journal. Meanwhile, in Henryville, authorities found a man dead inside his vehicle. It was the first confirmed death in Clark County. We've got total devastation in the north central part of the country and widespread damage from west to the east, Clark County Sheriff Clark Adam told CNN. Neighboring Maryville was totally destroyed. Maryville is completely gone, said Chuck Adams of Clark County Sheriff's Department.